the Lord. Please don't look at the empty chairs. Let's focus on God. This month is the month of praise. Um, where is Brackley? Where is Sister She? You can be help me with this song. My hallelujah belongs to you. My hallelujah belongs to you. My hallelujah belongs to you. My hallelujah belongs, belongs to, to you. you. You deserve it, Lord. You, you deserve, deserve it. it. You deserve it, Lord. You, you deserve it. it. You deserve it. You deserve it. the Lord. Hallelujah. This is our month of praise. So our God deserves all the hallelujahs. He deserves all the hallelujahs. So I want to do like Joel, Joel Austin. Anytime he wants to preach, he always cracks some jokes. So I want to see. Um, men, who should make coffee in the home? Is it the, the wife or the husband? Okay. So there was this couple, husband and wife, they were arguing every time that it's the woman that should make the coffee and not the husband. The husband says, I know for a fact that it is the women that should brew the, you know, the coffee. The wife says, no, it is the man. So one day the wife said, you know what? I'm going to prove this to you in the Bible. That it is the man that should, that should make the coffee. So he, she opened the Bible to the book of Hebrews. So it is the man. Hebrews. The book of Hebrews. <laughs> so, praise the Lord. Psalm 100. Make a joyful noise unto the Lord, all ye lands. Serve the Lord with gladness. Come before his presence with singing. Know ye that the Lord, he is God. It is he that had made us and not we ourselves. We are his people and the sheep of his pasture. Enter into his gates with thanksgiving and into his courts with praise. Be thankful unto him. And bless his name. For the Lord is good. His mercy is everlasting. And his truth endureth to all generations. Hallelujah. So this morning I'm going to be talking about praise. Why should I praise God? Praising him. What does he, what, what does he do to me? And then we will talk about how. To praise God. You know, so many people don't praise God. A lot of people, they praise God after the fact. They wait until something happens before they start praising God. And if that thing does not happen the way they want it, they say, well, after all, I pay my tithe now. Why is this thing happening to me? But we should know. I want to show us today why we should praise God and how to praise our God. Amen? Do we, when we read the Bible, do we understand the meaning? Do we grasp the meaning of the words? Here is another joke. I want to see if you are going to catch it. There was this pastor. He wants to sell his horse. So a potential buyer came to buy that horse. And the pastor told the buyer, this horse only responds to biblical words. When you say hallelujah, he runs. When you say amen, 
he stops. So the buyer got on the horse and was shouting, was shouting, hallelujah. So the, the, the horse was running and running. So as the horse was going, it came to the edge of a cliff. So the buyer shouted, amen, and the horse stopped. So he was so excited that he stopped and he said, hallelujah. So, do we know the meaning of the word that we read in the Bible? Do we know what hallelujah means? Do we know the implication of a man? When we say our God is a Jehovah Rapha, do you know what that means? Do we just read the Bible as if we are reading a literature book? Or do we grab the meaning of the word that we read? So, why do I have to praise God? What had God done for me? Why, why do I praise him? Number one reason why we should praise God. He's worthy of all our praises. Nobody deserves the praise but our God. In Psalm 18, verse 3, it says, I will call unto the Lord who is worthy to be praised. So shall I be saved from mine enemies. I will call upon the Lord who is worthy to be praised. So now look at that, uh, the, the, the next thing. It says, because I'm praising him, I will be saved from my enemies. So our God does not take something from us and give us nothing in return. Unlike some human beings. You know, some people, they is, give me, give me, give me. They can take and take and take, and they give you nothing in return. But our God is not like that. He deserves all our praises, and when we praise him, we get something in return. Revelation 5, 11 to 12. And I beheld, and I heard the voice of many angels round about the throne. And the beasts and the elders and the number of them were 10,000 times 10,000 and thousands of thousands saying with a loud voice, worthy is the lamb that was slain to receive power and riches and wisdom and strength and honor and glory and blessing. That's what they do in heaven. That is what they do in heaven, praising God. You know, here on earth, we are too busy. We are too encumbered with the problems of this world that we barely have time to praise God. A lot of us, we go to bed without praying, without praising God. We have forgotten that it is the grace of God that took us out there and brought us back home. And when we are sleeping, instead of us praising our God, we are thinking about the problems of the world. But it's not so in heaven. The only thing they do over there is holy, holy, holy is the Lord, our God Almighty. When we praise and, and thank our God, we are verbalizing our faith. If you thank God after the fact, that is gratitude, where you are grateful for something. But if you thank God before something happens, that is faith. You know, faith, it is the evidence of things that you have not seen, but you believe it is coming, and you are thanking God for it. You are looking to change your job. You're already praising God for that job. That is faith. God wants to hear the voices of his children, which is why we praise God. He wants to hear our voice. It is the sweetest music of the ear of our God. If there is anything that he delights to hear more than the voice of prayer and petition, it is the voice of praise and adoration. When we pray, 
We add perfume to our life. But if there is anything that can add more to that fragrance, it is praise. It is not a question of prayer or praise. We have to keep the two together. Don't just pray. When we are praying, we are demanding, we are demanding, we are demanding, but praise. So there is, it says that when praises go up, his glory comes down. We see the example in the Bible. When the priests, when they gather together and the people that were praising God, we are told in the Bible that the sanctuary was filled with the presence of God, that the smoke was too thick that the ministers could no longer preach. Because when you praise God, he comes down himself to take that praise because his glory he will never share with another. But when we are praying, he sends angels. A good example is when Daniel was praying. God sent angel Gabriel to go and give the answers to those prayers. But as we know in the Bible, he was waylaid by the prince of Persia. God again has to send angel Michael to go now and relieve Gabriel so that Gabriel can go and give the answers to those prayers. But when you are praising God, he comes down himself. Why do I praise God? Or why should I praise him? Praise makes our soul beautiful. It is the heavenly activity in which the soul can engage. The Holy Spirit shines through the Christian's life that is saturated with praise. It is called the Shekinah glory of God. When we praise God, his glory comes down. Nothing can take that glory away. Praise adds sweetness to the voice. Praise adds loveliness to the soul. Praise fills the life with song. It fills our heart with joy. It adds graciousness to all of life. Praise clothes us with the beauty of the Lord. Amen? Another reason why we should praise our God is that we are called to praise and worship God. It's a commandment. We are called to praise him. We are called to worship him. First Peter 2, verses 5 and 9. Not 5 through 9. I'm going to read verse 5 and then verse 9. First Peter 2. Ye also, as lively stones, are built up a spiritual house, and holy priesthood to offer up spiritual sacrifices acceptable to God by Jesus Christ. So praise is a sacrifice. It's a commandment. We all know what sacrifice means. Sacrifice means it hurts. It's painful. For instance, you have just lost a loved one. Why, why do you have to praise God? But if you think if you can think about that situation, you can thank in that situation. The Bible says, in all things. He did not say, for all things. In all things, give thanks. Because there is a reason. For instance, maybe you woke up so late, and you are so upset, and you are blaming God. Why? Why? The alarm did not go off. There was no one to wake me up. And you are so upset. Instead of you to be thanking God, he could have used that, maybe those five minutes of delay to prevent you from running into an accident. So the Bible says, in all things, give thanks. Don't grumble. Don't complain. Yes, humanly we will grumble, we will complain. But quickly correct yourself. And turn it to praises. Verse 9, it says, But ye are a chosen generation. I'm still reading 1 Peter 2, now verse 9. But ye are a chosen generation, a royal priesthood, and holy nation, a peculiar people, 
that you should show forth the praises of him who hath called you out of the darkness into the marvelous light of his dear son. You know, the world is coming to an end. There is gross darkness out there. But the Lord has called you out single-handedly. Who are you? Who am I? That the Lord brought us out from the darkness. Some people now, they're in the club. They are, they are doing all sorts of things. But you are here. You sacrifice your time. You woke up earlier than normal so that you can be in the house of God. Nobody forced you, but you came because you want to honor and reference your God. So why won't you praise him? He did not leave you in that gross darkness. He showed you the light, which is our Lord Jesus Christ. So praising God is a commandment. Luke 19, 36 to 40. And as he went, they spread their clothes in the way. This is our Lord Jesus Christ. And when he was come nigh, even now at the distance of the Mount of Olives, the whole multitude of the disciples began to rejoice and praise God with a loud voice for all the mighty works that they had seen, saying, Blessed be the king that cometh in the name of the Lord, peace in heaven and glory in the highest. And some of the Pharisees from among the multitude said unto him, Master, rebuke thy disciples. Look at how Jesus said it. He said, I tell you that if all this should hold their peace, the stones would immediately cry out. The Lord will not use stone to replace you and I. He wants us to praise him. So if you hold your peace, if you do not praise God, it does not make God any smaller than what he, he, he really is. It does not diminish his power. But you are the one that is suffering. Because it says, if these people hold their peace, if they do not praise me, these stones will rise. And they will begin to praise me. So praising God is a commandment. I just pray that the grace to continually praise God, regardless of what we are going to be giving to us in Jesus' name, we will forever praise our God in Jesus' name. Another reason to praise our God, to worship him, is that worship changes us. It transforms us. It makes us become the person that we are praising. 2 Corinthians 3.18 But we all, with open face, beholding as in a glass, the glory of the Lord are changed into the same image from glory to glory, even as by the Spirit. I want to read that again. We all, with open face, beholding as in a glass, the glory of the Lord, we are changed into the same image. When you are praising God, God is transforming you. He's changing you back onto him. Remember, he made you in his own image. The Bible says, in his image, creator he them. So when we get away from praising our God, we become like unbelievers. But when we praise him, he brings us back to that former image. To be like him. Isaiah 61.3. Isaiah 61.3. But we all, with open face, as in the glass, the glory of God, we are changed into the same image. We are changed into the spirit of God. So when we praise God, we are transformed. Another reason to praise God is that worship ushers in the manifested presence of God. When we praise God, his presence comes in. Psalm 22, verse 3. But thou art holy, O thou that inhabitest the praises of Israel. Like I said earlier, when we praise God, he does not abandon it. He comes himself to be in the midst of praisers, which is the reason why it's so important you know, that before we even start any service, any, any gathering, we should go before God with praises, with thanksgiving. It is a commandment. When we praise God, he comes down himself. He doesn't send anyone to come and take that praise. 
Another reason why we praise God is praise defeats our enemy. He defeats the enemy. Psalm 8, verse 2, the NIV, it says, From the lips of children and infants, you have ordained praise because of your enemies to silence the foe and the avenger. When we praise God, our enemies, they can't stand though. They have to flee. When you are praying and you receive no answers, change it to praise. Be thanking God for that same problem that you are praying for. And you will see how God will change things. Psalm 149, verses 5 and 6, it says, Let the saints be joyful in glory. Let them sing aloud on their beds. Sing aloud on their beds. What do you do when you lie down? Where does your soul go? Where does it travel to? Do you wake up sometime and, and hear yourself crying, you know, chanting the name of the Lord? That is what God expects from us. Let the saints be joyful in glory. Let them sing aloud on their beds. Let the high praises of God be in their mouth and a two-edged sword in their hand. What is that two-edged sword? The word of God. The word of God. So we should fill our heart with praises and then remember the word of God. Our enemies will fly. They have no choice. So our praises put the enemies to flight. We have to put praise first in every prayer. Do not let us be ingrates. Don't let us go before God and start demanding and demanding and demanding. If your child comes to you and keeps saying, I want this, I want this, and there is no please, you yourself will tell the person, and then you give the child, and the child just walks away, and this anything, you will, you will call the child to come back. What is the magic word? I didn't hear the please. If we human beings that can give good gifts to our own children, if we are instructing them to, 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 to appreciate what we do for them, to use the word please, how do you think our God feels? When we just pray and pray and pray and take and take, and we give him nothing in return. Our God deserves our praises. Psalms 107, 21 to 22, it says, Oh, that men will praise the Lord. Oh, that men will praise the Lord for his goodness, for his wonderful works. We always sing this song to the children of men. Let them sacrifice the sacrifices of thanksgiving and declare his works with rejoicing. Praising God is not easy. It is not simple. It is a selfless attitude. We have to forget about ourselves and give him all the glory. Why do I praise God? Praise multiplies the presence and power of the Lord. It's a secret of the blessed life that praise not merely adds blessing. It multiplies every blessing. So do you want to be blessed? Financially, praise God for it. Are you looking for spiritual increase? Praise God. Any form of blessing that you are seeking the face of the Lord for, turn it to praise. Praise brings blessings. And just not mere blessing that the word can give you, an everlasting blessing that no man can take away from you because it came from the God of gods and the Lord of lords. There are times that it is not easy to praise God, like I said before. But by him, let us offer the sacrifice of praise to God continually. That is the fruit of our lips, giving thanks to his name. This is in Hebrews 13, 15. When you begin to praise, the disquiet of your heart, the restlessness, and the fear of your soul begins to, dis to disappear. Are you afraid? Are you fearful? I'm one of them. Maybe I take it after my mother. Anytime any of my children travel, 
I'm as fearful, I'm, I'm as afraid, but I've told you to praise now. I tell my God I've not been given to the spirit of fear, but of love, of power, and of a sound mind. And I start praising God. So are you afraid? Turn it to praise. Are you looking for something that is not happening? Turn it to praise. Praise open heavens that the enemies can never shut. When you begin to praise, peace is blessedly multiplied within your soul. You won't even know how the peace is coming. When you begin to praise, sorrow is turned to joy. When you begin to praise, grumbling and criticism is withered to the roots. The breath of heaven blows the clouds away and you feel so clean and new again. When you begin to praise, Satan turns in terror and he flees from you. You know, Satan hates prayer, but you know what, what he hates most? Praise. When you are praying, Satan is waiting, you know, but when you start to praise God, he flees. And you know one thing, before Satan can do anything to anyone, he first of all asks God. We see many examples in the Bible. So if Satan wants to do something to anyone, he goes to God. And then you are praying, you are praising God. And Satan is there asking, oh, I want to hold this one. God will say, which one? You want, to, you want to hold that one? Do you hear what is coming from him? He's praising me for things that have even not done for him. How dare you come to me and request permission to hold him? No way, no chance. Satan flees when we are praising God. Because everything that happens in the natural happens first in the spirit realm. And the Lord is fighting our battle while we are praising him. Amen? Praise the Lord. Praising God opens your heart to God. And to all his sweet heavenly influences. Praising God gives the Holy Spirit welcome and the right of way in your life. Praising God lifts you above the trivial accusations of your enemies. Praising God reduces that mountain to a leveled ground. You see so many examples in the Bible. Who art thou, O mountain, before Zerubbabel? They were praising God and the mountains were melting. So praising God, when you have problems, your solutions are already there. Praising God gives you the ego's vision and opens your eye of faith so that you can see the victory ahead. Like I, as I always tell people, at the end of that dark tunnel, when you are going in the tunnel, you don't know where you are going, there is a ray of light. And what will expose it to you is praise. It shows you which way to go. Praise. Is more powerful than prayer. Praise is a weapon that enemies cannot take away from you. Praising God multiplies your faith and fills you with joy and peace in believing. This is in Romans 15, 13. Praising God seems to fill you with the very faith of God and to strengthen you with the power of the Holy Ghost. Praising God changes you and changes the situation before you. Praising God opens the way to miracles. Amen? When we are praising God, it turns our battles to victory. Praising God makes you triumphant in every battle. Praising God brings to your aid all the resources of heaven. The angels of God recognize the sound of praise and they rush to your side to win the victory for you. Praising God brings the shout of victory in the midst of the battle. Praising God turns the battle into the rout of the enemy. In the book of 2 Chronicles 2022, we all know this story. In the battle 
of the time of King Jehoshaphat. The king and the people, they humbled themselves and they sought the face of God. He put his spirit on unknown Levites and gave them a message of hope. They believed the promise of God and they marched into battle with singers praising God in front of the battle. Can you imagine? Troops are coming to fight them. But God says, don't do anything. Keep praising. They might think, ah, God, are, are you serious? Is, can, can, can this be true? They are coming with weapons, with guns, with arrows. And you want us to be praising God? You want us to die here? But God is not mocked. He knows what he's doing. We all know that story. Like I said, it's in Second Chronicles chapter 20. You can read this at your own convenience. All the enemies, they were destroyed. The people of God shouting praises, singing praises, praising him, they left triumphantly. Praising God defeats all your enemies. What else? How else? Do I, I mean, why should I praise God? What else does praise do? Praise says an ambush for the devil. No wonder. He flees at the sound of praise. When Israel praised God, the walls of Jericho fell down flat. When Paul and Silas were praising God in the prison, we all know that. Their chains came off. They were in the innermost part of the prison. Because they were praising God, the angels came and loosed them. When you are praising God, you cannot be head bound. When you begin to praise God, victories come towards you. So let us make it a habit to praise God. There is nothing that our God delights in more than praises. He delights in praises more than prayer. So that is why before you go before God for any situation, let praise go first. This was the secret which David learned. And we all need to learn it over and over and over again. I want you to hear some of um, David's testimony. It says in Psalm 34, verse 1, I will bless the Lord at all times. His praise shall continually be in my mouth. Psalm 35, verse 28, My tongue will speak of thy praise all the day. Psalm 71, verse 8, Let my mouth be filled with thy praise all the day. Whether you are hungry, whether the boss is mean to you or not, whether that job you are doing, you are just doing it so that you can pay your bills, praise the God in the midst of it. When the praise continues to go up, God will open heaven unto you. You will be the employer of labors. You'll be wondering, is this me? Can this be true? Praise open doors. Psalm 106, verse 2. Who can show forth all his praise? And there are too many. I will hope continually and will yet praise thee more and more. These are some of David's te uh, testimonies. He says, I will go in the strength of the Lord. Can you not see why David was then a man after God's own heart? He said, praise full person, not only prayerful. He was filled with praising. So my brothers, my sisters, I want us to make the remaining days of this year and the days of our lives, days of praises. Let us begin today to praise God. Begin by filling your heart with God's praises wherever you go. Begin by praising the Lord the first thing each morning before you ask him anything. Praise him. Begin by praising God every time you feel tempted to doubt God. Every time you want to be afraid. Every time you want to be worried. Every time you are being criticized, turn it to praise. Praise will fill your heart 
with the power and the faith in God. Amen? Praise close you with heaven's beauty. Praise open the gates to blessing. Like I said, praise wins battles for us. Praise the Lord, O oh my soul. While I live, I will praise the Lord. I will sing praises unto my God. Amen? Now we, we know why we have to praise. Now, how do I praise God? I have to praise God with my voice. Just like we have been saying. Psalm 63, verse 3. It says, because your loving kindness is better than life, my lips shall praise you. Praise God with your voice. Instead of you cursing or shouting and gossiping, use these lips to praise God. Caution yourself before you want to, if you want to go out of focus, quickly bring yourself back and turn you to praise. Acts 16.25, but at midnight, I read this, Paul and Silas were praying and singing hymns to God, using their lips, and the listeners were listening to them. So praise God with your mouth, with your lips. How else can I praise God? With my body. Psalm 63, verse 4, it says, Thus I will bless you while I live. I will lift up my hands in your name. When you see people jumping and lifting, they are praising God with their body. It is God that gave you that body. You can lift the hand. You can move the feet. You are, you, you, you are able to stand up. You are not being wheeled from one room to the other. Use your body to praise God. Psalm 95 verse 6. It says, Oh, come, let us worship and bow down. Let us kneel before the Lord our maker. Praise God with your body. He owns it. He owns it all. How else can I praise God? With music. You know this. That's why I love praise and worship. Psalm 150, verses 3 to 5. It says, praise him with the sound of the trumpet. Praise him with the lute and harp. Praise him with the timbrel and dance. Praise him with the stringed instruments and flutes. Praise him with loud cymbals. Praise him with clashing symbols. God loves it. When we praise God, he comes down. How do I praise God? Praise God with your emotions. Psalm 47 verse 1. Oh, clap your hands, all ye peoples. Shout to God with the voice of triumph. What are you going through? Are you saddened? In that in that situation, use that emotion to praise God. How else do I praise God? Praise God with your life. Praise God with your life. First Corinthians 10, 31. Therefore, whether you eat or drink or whatever you do, do all to the glory of God. So praise God with all your being. Praise God with everything that you have. He owns it. Our God does not owe us anything, but we owe him everything. So let us continually praise God because our God is a faithful God. So I just want us to go now before God and just thank him. Let us open our mouths and praise God. Let us thank him for the grace given to us to be here today. It's not by power, not by might. Let us give him all the glory that he deserves. Father, we worship you. We thank you, Daddy, for counting us worthy to be among those that will be praising you because the dead cannot praise you. We say to you, sir, be all the glory, honor, and adoration. For we pray in Jesus' name. Praise the Lord.